Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about fatty acids. So we'll describe what fatty acids are, we'll talk about saturated versus unsaturated, we'll talk about the numbering systems for fatty acids, and then we'll talk about the melting temperature of fatty acids. So by the end of this video you should be able to describe the structure of a fatty acid, and you should be able to predict its relative melting temperature. So let's start with what fatty acids are. They are long, unbranched chains of carbons with a carboxylic acid group on the front. And so this part is the acid, and the long hydrocarbon tail is nonpolar, which we chemists like to call fatty because it doesn't dissolve in water like grease. So it's a fatty acid. The amount of carbons is usually between 12 to 20. It can be anywhere from 8 to like 24, but most of them are 12 to 20. They don't dissolve in water because the nonpolar tail is so big. Remember, more than five or six carbons, they don't dissolve in water. And we can use the term saturated or unsaturated, depending on whether or not there are double bonds in the tail. So a saturated fatty acid has only carbon-carbon single bonds in the tail region, like this one here. Unsaturated means that it has at least one double bond in the tail region. And the reason we use the term saturated is we're talking about the number of hydrogens so all of these carbons in the saturated fat are CH2 groups, except for the end, which is a CH3. All the carbons have four bonds. They can't obtain any more hydrogens if they wanted. Whereas the double bond, these carbons here only have one hydrogen. And so theoretically, you could add more hydrogens to this molecule because the carbons could potentially have two hydrogens each. So it is unsaturated with hydrogens. So unsaturated, double bond, saturated, single bonds. Now we can use the term mono unsaturated when the carbon chain has only one double bond. And the double bond can occur anywhere along the tail. It could be close to the end, it could be closer to the front, it could be in the middle, it could be anywhere. But if it only has one double bond, we call it a mono unsaturated fat. Now, alkenes can exist in the cis or trans conformation. Cis double bonds cause the fatty acid tail to be kinked or bent like this, whereas the trans double bonds are more linear. And that'll come into play when we talk about melting temperature. So cis are kinked, trans are linear. Now, something that's interesting is more than 99% of all naturally occurring fats are cis. So trans fats are exceedingly rare in nature. Most of the time when we see trans fats, they are artificially created. The most natural fatty acids, if they're unsaturated, are cis. Now you can also have poly unsaturated, and poly means more than one. And so there are more than one double bonds in the tail. Could be two, could be three, could be four, could be five, more than one. And so these tails are really kinked because of the double bonds. And the double bonds can occur, once again, anywhere in the tail. But usually when you have a polyunsaturated, the double bonds are spaced out by one CH2 group in between the double bonds. So double bond, CH2, double bond, CH2, double bond. Now, we won't get into the why, but that has to do with how uh, fatty acids are synthesized in organisms. And so we typically end up with the double bonds spaced out evenly like this, where they're separated by one CH2 group. Now, how do we describe a particular fatty acid? 
right? These can all have different lengths. They can have double bonds, no double bonds. The double bond can be in a different position. And so we need some system to describe what this looks like without drawing it. And so we use a numbering system instead of a naming system. And the first numbering system is called the CD numbering system. C stands for the number of carbon atoms. And D represents the number of double bonds. So if you have a fatty acid, first thing you do is count the carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, 13, 14. So the number of carbons is 14. And then we put a colon. And then we list the number of double bonds in the tail. And this one has zero double bonds in the tail. So according to the numbering system, this would be a 14, zero fatty acid. 14 carbons long, no double bonds. And this allows you to easily draw the structure just off of this simple information. So this is the CD numbering system. Let's do the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So this one has 18 carbons. And then we want to state the number of double bonds. And so I see that there are two double bonds in the tail. And so this is an 18-2 fatty acid. 18 carbons with two double bonds. But hopefully your next question was, how do we specify where the double bonds are? And so that's the omega numbering system. And this allows us to state where along the tail the double bonds occur. And so omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. And so the last carbon in the tail is considered the omega position. And so for this numbering system, we're going to start from the omega end here, from the backside. And we're going to count forward until we get to the double bond. So this one here, this would be carbon number one, two, three, and that's where my double bond starts. So this would be an omega three. Omega kind of looks like W, but a little more curly. You can also write omega out. So you could say omega dash three. Both are acceptable. Now this second one here, if we count backwards, that's carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This would be an omega seven fatty acid. And if you combine this with the CD numbering system, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So this one is a 17, three omega-3 fatty acid. 17 carbons long, three double bonds, and going from the end, the double bonds start at the third carbon. So when you use both numbering systems, you can accurately draw the entire structure just based off those pieces of information, right? And the second one here would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 18. So this one is an 18, two fatty acid omega-7. So the CD numbers tell you, once again, the number of carbons and the number of double bonds. And then the omega numbering system tells you where the double bonds start going from the tail end. So now that we've talked about the structure of fatty acids and how to describe it using a numbering system, Let's talk about melting point or melting temperature. So fatty acids usually have melting temperatures around room temperature. They can be liquids or solids. 
at room temperature and that temperature at which they melt varies a little bit. And it varies depending on the number of carbons or the chain length. And so I would like to draw your attention to these columns here. So here's the CD numbering system. So number of carbons and none of these have double bonds. So we're only looking at the amount of carbons. And then this column shows the melting temperature in degrees Celsius. And so what do you know? Well, the trend is as you increase the number of carbons, the melting temperature increases, which kind of makes sense, right? So when molecules are solid, they're stuck together. But as they melt, they start to peel away from each other and they start to tumble around. And so the temperature at which they melt is a relative measure of how strong those molecules are stuck together. And bigger molecules have a bigger surface area and they stick together better. Whereas smaller molecules have a smaller surface area and it's easier to peel them apart. Imagine this like uh, two pieces of tape stuck together. If you have like regular scotch tape, you know, it's a little annoying to peel them apart. But if you have like duct tape stuck together face to face, it's like really hard to peel it apart. Right? The bigger the molecule, the bigger the surface area, the better they stick together. So more carbons, higher melting temperature. Now, what happens when we look at the double bonds? Remember how we said most naturally occurring double bonds in a fat are cis, and that a cis double bond gives the fat a kinked shape? Well, I don't know if anybody's ever stacked wood, but flat logs stack really well because they're flat. But then if you get that one bent branch and you try and like stack it on the pile, then, you know, all the logs for the rest of the pile are all skewed and the whole log pile can topple over really easily. That's kind of the same concept here. When we have double bonds in the fatty acid chain, it kinks it and they don't like stack as well and it makes like an awkward pile and they don't stick together the same way the saturated fats do. So the bent ones are kind of already tumbling and they want to be liquids. And the more double bonds you have, the more zigzagged that tail is, the worse it gets. And so the more double bonds, the lower the melting temperature. And so let's take a look at this here. This is the number of double bonds, and this is the melting temperature. And so as you increase the number of double bonds, melting temperature decreases. So more double bonds, lower melting temperature. Whereas more carbon atoms, higher melting temperature. So the longer the chain, the better it sticks together. But the more kinks, the worse they stick together. And my favorite image to illustrate this is with potato chips. So you can think of saturated fats like Pringles. They all have that nice linear shape and they stack really well. And they're a solid. Whereas these unsaturated fatty acids are bent and they don't make a nice stack and they tumble and they're liquidy. And that would be kind of like a pile of Lay's potato chips, right? They're all irregularly shaped and you can't make a nice stack. So. Silly analogy, but very accurately illustrates the concept at the molecular level, right? Saturated fats stack. They have a high melting temperature. Unsaturated fats are bent. They tumble and they're liquidy. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about is essential fatty acids. So your body requires certain fatty acids to function. Your body can't make these fatty acids on its own. You have to get them in your diet. And so we call them essential because they're essential to life. If you don't get them in your diet, you will die. Thankfully, we get them in our diets because we eat a variety of foods in America. 
Um, but this was a problem historically, depending on, you know, what your diet subsisted of. Now, the reason they're essential is your body uses these fatty acids as the building blocks to make certain hormones and other signaling molecules. And so if you don't have the fatty acid, you can't make the hormone and you start having all sorts of weird health effects. The particular type of fatty acids that are essential tend to be polyunsaturated fatty acids, uh, like these ones shown here. So linoleic, linolenic, and arachidonic acid um, are your polyunsaturated fatty acids that are essential. All right, so quick study check, and then we'll end this video. So here's a fatty acid. Let's answer some questions about it. Why is it considered an acid? Why do we call it a fatty acid? Well, what functional group is this here on the head? That's a carboxylic acid. And that's where the name acid comes from. This hydrogen can be given away and acids are anything that gives off hydrogen. So this is a acid. Is this fatty acid saturated, monounsaturated, or polyunsaturated? Well, we can see that there's one CC double bond right there. Since there's only one, it's got to be monounsaturated. All right, can we describe the fatty acid using the CD and omega numbering systems? Let's do the CD system first. So remember, C is the number of carbons. D is the number of double bonds. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So we have eighteen carbons, and we only have one double bond. So that is an eighteen one fatty acid. Now using the omega system, where does that double bond occur? So now we got to count backwards. I'll use a different color here. So if carbon number 18 is the omega end, then if we count backwards, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so that would be an omega nine fatty acid because the double bond starts at carbon number nine when we count backwards. Is this likely to be a solid or a liquid at room temperature? Well, what did we say about double bonds in relation to melting temperature? If you have a double bond, it has a lower melting temperature. And so all these fatty acids here that have double bonds, their melting points are in the negative temperature, which means they are liquids at room temperature. You got to put this thing in the freezer if you want it to solidify. So I would expect this one to be a liquid at a room temperature because it's unsaturated. And last but not least, would you expect it to be soluble in water? Absolutely not. No fatty acids are soluble in water. That's why we call them fatty. They have too many carbons in the tail, and those carbons don't want to mix with water. So it would be insoluble in water. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.